one way to think about these leaks uh, is that they are a kind of democratic immune system response to the problem of executive branch overclassification. You can think of them as a safety valve for our democracy. Uh, a professor at Columbia Law School named David Posen has written a very interesting article about this uh, in which he defends certain leaks as a feature and not a bug uh, of our democratic system. Uh, and think about it. Now, studies have shown that nearly half of current and former senior federal government officials have self-reported that they have leaked information to the press. That surely understates the actual number, which is probably almost all. Uh, with the exception of uh, the vice president's counsel, uh, who allegedly revealed the identity of an undercover agent, none of these officials has ever been prosecuted. Uh, now again, most leaks are not what I would call, or anyone would call, whistleblowing. Uh, most of them serve multiple agendas, including bureaucratic and political agendas in Washington. Here's an example. In September of 2009, Bob Woodward, who is really the dean of the Washington Press Corps, uh, uh, obtained a leaked copy of a confidential military assessment of the war in Afghanistan that included General Stanley McChrystal's opinion that more troops were necessary to avoid mission failure. Now, the purpose of this leak was obviously to manipulate the policy debate and to put public pressure on President Obama to comply with the commanding general's preferred strategy. So amid the mountains of really harmless and illegitimately classified documents that the government produces each year, this leak, the one I'm talking about now, involved one of the small categories of documents that we would all agree is appropriately kept secret. It was a war planning document. Yet the Pentagon showed little interest in discovering who was responsible for leaking these war plans. Uh, and it's easy to understand why that's the case. Uh, we can suspect where the leak came from. But my focus today is not on those kinds of sanctioned government leaks uh, to push public policy, uh, but on a different and more controversial, I think, species of leaks, uh, and that is unauthorized disclosures of conduct and information that the government has aggressively attempted to keep secret. Uh, and let me talk about that species of leaks. In the last decade alone, without unauthorized leaks to the press, uh, we would not have known that the case for war in Iraq in 2002 and 2003 was based on, at a minimum, deliberate exaggerations of the available evidence. Uh, most people who I know would use stronger words. Uh, we would not have known that American soldiers tortured and sexually humiliated prisoners in Abu Ghraib prison in Iraq we would not have known that the CIA set up a network of secret prisons around the world and used a so-called extraordinary rendition program to kidnap people off the streets, chain them to the floors of planes, and fly them to those places. We would not have known about an enhanced interrogation program known to the rest of the world and to us for most of our history as torture, where prisoners were waterboarded, suspended from ropes, beaten, and treated in ways that the U.S. has always considered criminal when it was done to our own soldiers. We would not have known that the Bush administration decided that the rules for foreign intelligence surveillance collection were too cumbersome, and that they should throw them aside and collect whatever they wanted under the president's own authority, leading to the near resignation of the attorney general and the FBI director. All of this was classified, not just classified. This stuff was classified at the highest level. These were the secrets that the government said were the most critical to conceal. If we only knew what the executive branch wanted us to know, as I said, and if an executive branch classification stamp defined the four corners of public knowledge, our democracy would be weaker, not stronger.